In today's episode, we'll be speedrunning a fountain pen icon and a fingerprint icon. I'll start by creating them as quickly as I can, and then I'll go through both icons step by step, discussing all the techniques used. And now it's time to create a fountain pen icon. Uh, the way we'll start this one is by selecting the, the polygon tool. And uh, when you're creating a polygon, while you're in the middle of dragging out the polygon, you can actually push the up and down arrows to change the number of sides. Uh, in this instance, we're after a hexagon, so six sides. Another way to choose the number of sides is to click up once on the canvas, and that'll bring up this polygon window so you can type in an exact value if you want. Um, Anyway, so what we want to do is start the select the polygon tool and start dragging out from two pixels under the center, and create a polygon that is um, has a, a radius of four. So one, two, three, four. That's that's now what we're after, and then grab the selection tool and drag the polygon. So grab one of the um, these bottom points and drag it up, and while you're dragging, hold down Option to create a copy and also hold down shift so it constrains and just snap it to this, this point here in the grid. And then what we want to do is we just want to mani manipulate these two bottom points. So I'm going to grab the selection direct selection tool and drag a marquee selection out. And you'll notice I use the, mar the marquee selections a lot rather than clicking points. It just, it's just a lot faster and more accurate. And with these two points selected, now if we just change to the, the scale tool, It'll use the um, the center point of the the selection bounding box, which in this case is the middle of these two points. And this is a good technique when you want to do kind of mirrored editing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the uh, the rightmost point out a little bit, so just just more than one pixel. And you can see I'm I'm editing both at the same time because of because they were both selected, and we're using a transform tool. And then what we want to do is get the direct selection tool again and drag out another marquee to select the top two points. And this time what I'd like to do is actually move them to the, the midpoint between the two points. And we can do that using the, the average feature. So under object, path, average, and we either want average horizontal or average both. I usually just leave it on both because that's mostly what I'm after. So just click OK. And that's now moved the points to the center. Um, the there is one issue with this though, because it, there's still two points there. So there's it hasn't removed one of the points. It's they've just just it just moved them. And there is a, a nice fix for this. If you um if you open up the, the Pathfinder panel and the Unite feature, um, even though we have only one shape selected, the Unite feature will actually clean up the path for us. So if you look now, we have two points. That's not what we're after. If I just click Unite, it hasn't changed anything, not visually, but there is now only one point at the top. And the difference is, if we select this point, we can now um, create a corner there, whereas we couldn't do that previously when there was only when there were two points sitting on top of each other. So what we want to do is uh, select this this point up here, and then drag the um, the live corner handle and pull it all the way down until that uh, line segment becomes thicker, indicating that it's the maximum radius. And we, we now have the, the top top path done, so we need to work on this bottom path. So if you get the 
selection tool or direct, direct selection tool and click once on the shape that will select it. And then from here, object path, add anchor points that um, subdivides all of the, the path segments. And then what we want to do is get the direct selection tool and select the bottom five points here. So we just want these ones selected and then get the, the scale tool. And we're going to do the same thing again, where we select um, some of the points and then transform them. And I'm going to click in the very, very center of the hexagon here to set the origin. And then just drag this, this bottom right hand point. I, you can drag anywhere when you're transforming, but I, I find it usually pretty helpful to drag from a specific point because then the, um, the snapping will work using that point. So I'm just going to drag down and in a bit, just like that. And then get the direct selection tool again and drag another marquee out. So we just want these left and the left and right points down here and then drag the, um, the live corner handle, drag it all the way out. So it goes until the line segment is thicker. And we, we now have most of this shape done, but we need to subtract some parts. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm actually going to get the, the pen tool. So just up here and click once in the very, very center underneath. And then once in the, the, um, the old center of the, the hexagon. And I usually don't use the line tool. I, I just use the, the pen tool for, for straight lines. Um, and now what we can do is give this a stroke. So I'm just going to give it a stroke of 0.25. And then outline the stroke. So object path outline stroke. And this, this will create a, a rectangle for what was previously a path with a stroke is now um, a, a rectangle, but it's, it's the correct thickness and it's centered on the, um, the pixel boundary, which is what I was after. And then from here, I'm just going to grab the, the ellipse tool and draw a, an ellipse that actually is just a covering a single pixel near the center. And it's not in the center of the, the hexagon, but it, it needs to be. So I'm going to hit enter. Oh, sorry. Switch to the, the selection tool and hit enter. And then we can, from that, it'll, it'll bring up the, um, the move panel. And what we want to do is push it across half a pixel. So 0.5 and then move it down half a pixel. So 0.5 and hit okay. And we now have the, the path we created that is a turned into a rectangle and the, the circle, the ellipse that's in the center. So we want to subtract these from the, the main shape behind. So with the, the pathfinder panel, if you click minus front, that will now give us the, um, the shape we're after. And the icon is done, it's just not rotated. So we just need to grab the selection tool and drag a marquee out to select both of the, both of the, um, the paths. Then select the rotation tool, click the very center of the, uh, the icon area. This sets the origin and then drag to rotate and hold down shift to constrain to 45 degrees. Now let's create a fingerprint icon. And the way we're going to start this one is by selecting the ellipse tool and creating an ellipse that starts from the, the vertical center of the icon, but hanging out to the, uh, the left side of the icon area by two pixels. So I'm just starting over here. And while dragging out the ellipse, I'm just going to hold down option to create from the center and also shift to constrain to, a, to be an exact circle and then drag it out so that the, um, the circle just hits the, just touches the, the center of the icon area. And then from here, what we're actually after is for this to be a, um, rather than being a fill for it to be a stroke. So that the fill is filled style is usually the default in Illustrator. I actually want this to be a stroke instead. And there's a few different ways we can do that. One of them is um, just clicking this icon above the, the fill and stroke swatches. That'll swap them. Another method is to, um, to press shift X and that'll swap them as well. And then from there, just with the, the direct selection tool, I'm just going to click the, um, the top point, top anchor point of this circle and hold shift and click the, the leftmost point and then press delete or cut. I actually find cut more convenient. Um, now we have a, a quarter circle, which is exactly what we're after for the next step. And from here we can use object path 
offset path. So this will create a, a new path that is uh, essentially a path that is a stroke of whatever you have selected. So we want this offset path to be to be two pixels and have round joins. And once you've set that up, just press OK. That creates one of the ridges. We actually want a lot more of them though. So I'm going to do that a few more times. So object, path, op offset path. Again, two pixels offset round. One more time, object, path, offset path, two pixels round. And now we have actually all of the, the ridges where we want, but um, I'm going to do it one more time just to give us the, the correct mask that I'm going to use to cut. So object, path, offset path. This time it's just going to be a one pixel offset and still round. Click OK. And then from here, if we grab the, the rotate tool and I just want to rotate around the, the center of the icon area. So I'm just going to click once in the very center of the icon area and then drag to rotate just this, this last offset path that we created. And I'm going to hold down shift to constrain because I actually want the, the rotation to be 180 degrees exactly. So I'll just drag it around and there we go. And then we, we now have all the, the paths we're after for this icon. I'm just gonna get the selection tool and then drag a marquee selection out that selects all of the paths we've created. And then I'm gonna use the, the Pathfinder panel. And this is an option that isn't used very often, but in this specific instance, it's really handy. So the, um, the, the outline Pathfinder uh, breaks up all of the paths um, where they intersect. So I'm just gonna click that. It also removes the fill and the stroke, which is kind of a little bit annoying, but it's fine. Um, and it creates a, a grouped result. So the first thing I need to do now is to select object um, ungroup. And then what we'll do is we'll give this path a, a stroke with a, a weight of one and uh, also a round cap, cap style. And I'm going to turn this into a dashed line, which will do a lot of the work for us to create the, um, the unique fingerprint ridges. And the, uh, the dash size is, I'm, I'm going to use this eight pixels with a gap of two. Okay, so we now have um, pretty much everything we need for the icon, except we need to delete some of these paths. So an easy way to do that is um, with the selection tool is to hold down shift and just select the parts that we want to keep. So I'm gonna drag a marquee selection out and then let go. And we now have uh, just the things selected that we actually want to remove. So we can remove those with either delete or cut. Um, I often find cut more convenient because of where it is on the keyboard and where my hands normally rest. And we now have a pretty convincing fingerprint icon, but it's looking a little bit uniform. And one way to break that up is um, we can actually get the, the uh, dashed line to, to reset. We can force it to reset by inserting some, some cuts in the, the path. So if you grab the, the scissors tool and then you can click pretty much anywhere um, on any of these paths and just experiment to see if it helps the icon. Um, I'm going to click once here, that'll break it up. And then I'm going to click another time just there. And now what we have is a pretty convincing fingerprint icon that is, isn't so uniform. It's looking a little bit more human. Um, the other thing I'd say is this now is we've, we've got the results we're after, but it's not a very good um, production asset because these are all dashed lines. Um, and not only that, they're actually broken into parts, which is not great. So what I'd do is I'd select everything and object path outline stroke. We now have um, actual final paths for these things. So we're not relying on the, the dashed rendering, which may not match depending on where you're using it. Um, and I'm also going to open up the, the pathfinder panel again and click unite just to basically fuse these parts together because that's, that's, yeah, I don't want them as separate paths. So I'm just going to select everything and with the uh, direct selection tool and then click unite in the, um, the pathfinder panel. And yeah, we now have a, a nice production asset and a finished icon.